Dr. Stone's Auditorium of Wonders was inspired by the research that I've been doing into 19th century dime museums. They were sort of a phenomenon uh, from the mid-19th to the late 19th century, mostly in urban areas. So essentially, there was a huge influx of population into urban centers from rural migration because of the Industrial Revolution, people moving into cities to work in factories. And these people had uh, leisure time, basically, on their weekends, and also a little bit of spending money. So there were entrepreneurs that saw this as an opportunity to create these new businesses, these dime museums. The idea of these dime museums was that they were marketed as being very respectable in a way that people could better themselves and educate themselves. These museums would, would have um, sort of objects that would be considered higher class, like classical painting and sculpture, but they would have them right alongside um, freak shows, objects of maybe sort of dubious or questionable value, um, technological marvels of the day. So it was a real uh, wide breadth of objects that now we would consider being of high and low cultural value. But the marketing of these museums made, made everything that was on display within them seem legitimate and seem very um, important and a source for this betterment of the individual. For the exhibition, I created this persona of Dr. Soans, so his image uh, appears throughout the exhibition and on the promotional information. This is sort of a, a throwback to these 19th century dime museums, which generally were associated with the owner, with the entrepreneur. My decision to call him Dr. Soans actually also has a direct link to a practice in the 19th century where oftentimes people were called in these museums, they were accredited as being professors or doctors or this idea that, that they were someone who retained some type of knowledge that was elevated beyond sort of the normal man. And oftentimes, um, obviously, these people weren't professors or doctors and didn't have necessarily any degree. They were simply an entrepreneur who had the capital to start a business. And I think this is an interesting concept because we look at museums and galleries today and most often they are associated not with a single person but with a larger institution and I was interested in uh, what would happen if you associate a single person with what's displayed and the facts or the information that's displayed as opposed to an institution because I think it's a lot easier to question information that's presented to us by a person or associated with a person than uh, when we're receiving information that's coming from sort of this authoritative or anonymous voice that's often associated with larger institutions. Generally in contemporary gallery spaces, the artworks are spaced very far apart, the walls are very pristine and clean, there's a lot of open space. My concept for the exhibition was to essentially do the exact opposite of that. I wanted to create a very obviously constructed environment for the gallery space. To create a lot of false walls that sectioned off the space, to use a lot of glass cases uh, almost as obstacles created in the space that actually force the viewer to sort of walk around in the space almost like it's a maze and is more about uh, an environmental experience in the space for the viewer. There's also the inclusion of um, fabricated label information, so in some cases the information that's uh, provided next to an object may or may not be accurate or true, or it's a, maybe a little bit of a stretch of the truth, and I'm hoping will trouble the, the viewer's experience in the space and make them uh, think about what they're looking at in a critical way, and maybe having more of, more of a lasting impression of that experience of the idea of wondering and questioning what's being presented. For sourcing objects for the exhibition, I was really lucky in that I had a few different collections that I was able to borrow objects from. So the bulk of what's on display in the auditorium is pulled from the University of Lethbridge's art collection. There's also objects that I was able to borrow from the departments of drama and biology at the University of Lethbridge. There's artifacts from the Galt Museum and Archives. And there are contemporary artists in the show as well. Denton Fredrickson, Chris Flanagan and Marianne McTro all contributed contemporary artworks to the exhibition. And there's also a few objects from personal private collections as well. 
The benefit of being able to borrow objects from collections which normally wouldn't be presented in a gallery or a museum, like from the departments of drama and biology, were that I had a little bit of uh, creative license with these objects. I could uh, create narratives to accompany the object and maybe change the way that the viewer was looking at them uh, because they aren't objects that are necessarily high cultural objects or objects that we associate with truth the way that we would with uh, the actual artifacts that are borrowed from the, the Galt Museum. So for some of the, pr the props that I got from the drama shop, I was able to construct narratives that were based in fact, uh, but were exaggerated or changed a little bit to sort of change the way that the viewer was looking at those objects. And the question that I'm hoping the show poses is, can wonder be deemed equally valuable as knowing?